This is a Good Time Charlie production. On your marks, get set. I love that. worry not we still know what we're doing and we told y'all that we would come around and do this very show when last we met and it's that time it's crimpers and CIA. it's a great british bake-off podcast and this go around we are reviewing series six episode one of the great american baking show cookie week uh the great american baking show has tried to be a thing now six times <laughs> and uh five seasons was on abc and that first season was kind of good. And it was uh, Aisha Curry and some other dude. And that other dude turned out to be a Me Too. And that's why that they, that show had to go away. <laughs> and then they brought it back with some other people. And it just has never quite clicked like it has now with new hosts uh, Zach Cherry and Ellie Kemper. And uh, unlike previous versions, this one actually goes down in the damn tent in England, and we have Paul and Prue. And it's just like all those things together make for, I think, a much better product. But we don't do this alone, the royal we. <laughs> and so I'm joined as always, always, forgive me, by uh, the homegirl, Nick Jew. Back like we never left. Also, for the sake of moving on, and this has really nothing to do with this episode, from now on, they will be referred to as Aubergine. And uh, <laughs> what's the other one? What's the other one? Um, <laughs> in my household, it's Aubergine instead of eggplant. Fair enough. Fair enough. Aubergines and courgettes? Courgettes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let course- it be confused. Please don't leave aubergines um, emojis in our uh, in our emails, please. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that's the homie Ant man. What's good, bro? Um, not a whole lot. Um, interested in seeing what you guys think of the show. So, first and foremost, hold on. As 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 as, as Nick shouts out, hit my theme music. We got to do some news, people. We got to do some news. Bakers make the world go round. West Side. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, You know I had to hit you. We got to hit y'all with some news, especially because the first one back. And there's a lot of news out here. So, but uh, I got a couple of tales to tell. Uh, one is, you know, I find to be interesting. The other one, a little salacious. So let's start with the interesting one. And then I can do some good <laughs> goods, okay? It's from the good people over at bakingbusiness.com. It's a site that I wouldn't have known existed, but here it is. Uh, Dan Malvain- Malavani is on the, the, the byline. Despite the rebound in restaurant sales over the past year, sales of tortillas and flatbeds, flat, flatbreads remain strong in the retail channel. While sales have dipped, slipped, while, while unit sales slipped only slightly. That surprised many industry experts like Jim Cabani, chief executive officer tort- tortilla of the Tortilla Industry Association. <laughs> Man, it goes down in the back ends of, of retail in this country. I would have never known such an association exists. Tortillas wow. are a co- co- conglomerate. Uh, during COVID, restaurants were running on fumes, he recalled. A lot of the business that g- was greatly reduced and people were buying their tortillas from retail outlets instead. The assumption was that once the pandemic got under control and people started going back to restaurants, 
that the business would shift back to the way it was before the pandemic, but it stayed robust in the retail category while at the same time recovering in the restaurant channel. Overall sales of hard and soft tortillas and taco kits jumped 13.6% to $3.67 billion, according to data by Circana, formerly IRI, and MPD for 52 weeks ending January 29th, 2023. But it's a lot of story here. It's way more story than you would even think here about yeah. tortilla sales. But uh, basically, we out here buying our tortillas. As I'm in the midst of trying to learn how to make my own tortillas. I probably put in about a couple thousand dollars on that before my doctor told me I couldn't eat eggs no more. I was eating eggs every day with like two tortillas for breakfast. You can't just uh, do whites? Why though? <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I, just, I, I, don't, I don't miss the yolk. I never have. <laughs> so I, I can have like seven eggs a week. So I do like an egg and an egg white if I want eggs. Um, I've made my own, own tortillas once, flour um, tortillas. Yeah. They're actually very easy to make because they don't involve yeast. Yeah. <laughs> yeast uh, is the ingredient I, I fear. Friend, yes. friend, friend of the show, Michelle, actually just wrote into a scam recently to tell me, tell me, well, I'm going to say me, but us, how easy it is to make tortillas uh, by hand. And, and they were I need delicious. To not yeah, not they were delicious. The ideal. Yeah. Um, so I want, I wants to get down with that, making my own or tortillas. We, uh, we got a, a hello fresh kit in at one point and it, it had these tortillas in it and they were really tasty, uh, with how they were prepared. And I was like, yo, I bet you if I made my own, I could make this whole recipe from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Everything included. So I was like, that's why I kind of want to get down with that, that ideal. But, uh, the, that lengthy article will be in your show notes. You, if you want to read the entire thing, if you are interested in the, the the retail uh, sector that is tortillas, man, that's a good find. Ant, well done, sir. Thank you. This one right here, though. This this one's this one's for y'all. <laughs> this is from the Daily Mail. Mm. So you know it gets oh, a little rah rah. Uh, by Joanna Crawley and uh, for, uh, for Mail Online is on the byline. He was the most important person in my life. Prue Leith, eighty three, revealed she had a secret. 13 year affair Ooh. with her mom's best friend's husband Let's and go. then married him. Let's go. <laughs> I knew I liked Prue. Great British Bake Off star Prue Leaf had spoken out about her 13 year affair she had with her husband, Rain Kruger. Mm. God, that is such a South African name. Prue 83 and author Rain were married from 1974 to 2002 before he died at the age of 80. But their long marriage started out as an affair, Prue has revealed in her autobiography, Relish. Great, great book title. Speaking about the decision to speak out in her memoir, the TV star said she had no desire to be discreet about her personal life, adding, if there are things in your life you're not exactly proud of, but they would be interesting to the reader, you should try to tackle them. Speaking to Kate Thornton on the White Wine Question Time podcast. Mm, That's a nice name. Prue said, I thought, (laughs) You know, to skip it when Rain wa- was the most important person in my life. How could I not? How could I not tell the whole his story, his whole story? So I did. Prue worked with Rain while he was married to the late South African actress Nan Monroe, Prue's mother's best friend. Mm. I never asked him to leave his wife because I was very happy. She explained to uh, of their affair. I had none of their duties of life and all the pleasures of someone who loved me. I wasn't pressing for pressing for marriage. We did have 13 secret years and nobody ever guessed because we were discreet. But it was easier in a way because he was a family friend, chairman of my company, and he helped me enormously and everyone knew we were great friends. Eventually, Rain left his wife, who was 17 years his senior, to start a life and a family with Prue. They have a son, Danny, and daughter, Lida, Lida, L-I-D-A. The couple remained good friends with Nan, who forgave them for the affair with Prue calling her an extraordinary woman. Mm. Writing in her book about the affair in 2017, Prue recalled that she had a hero worship reign since the age of seven, but it wasn't until I'd become an adult that we fell in love. She explained how in 1961, when she had left home in South Africa to study at the Sorbonne in Paris, her mother sent her to England for the summer to stay with Nan and Rain. They were fascinating, intelligent, generous, and loving family, she wrote adding that Nan, a successful actress, was usually at the, at the theater, so I saw more of Rain than any of the others. Soon, there was nothing I would rather do with, 
do than be with Rain. I told myself I, w- I was not falling in love with him, that he was out of bounds. And anyways, he loved Nan. Then one evening we were, were in the kit we were in the kitchen and he kissed me. I wish I could say I objected, but I didn't. Guilt about Nan would creep in later, but what I felt at that moment, apart from a leaping desire, was surprise and delight that that he considered me a kissable woman, not a child. And so again, a 13 year affair, I was utterly infatuated. There's more to this article, and again, it'll be the show notes, but uh Arrow, truly. It's- you know, it's the year of the side chick. I, you know, Camila, Camila. <laughs> the year of the side chick. English side chicks is, is in vogue, is what you're telling me. <laughs> I'm saying, if you just hold out long enough, that man will be yours. You might even be the queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, people. Uh, no, I don't want to say exactly, but I mean, I, I have proof. <laughs> so it's That's too. Someone in the comments says, ew, that story seems creepy as hell. <laughs> let's uh let's get let's get let's get to the, the, the action pact of this uh this uh series and uh what I love and don't love so much about it so far. <laughs> uh we have nine beggars of the tent, which is weird because you know we normally have is it, is it a dozen or ten? How did they hit us with like 12 bakers or something like that, right? When in I the, feel in like it's 12 because they do yeah. 10 episodes. Yeah. 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 So it is. Okay. It is a dozen bakers. I'm like, I'm like, this is already that. This is odd. Uh, but we have, uh, we are uh, joined in the tent this uh, go round by uh, uh, nine bakers. Uh, start with Martin Sorge. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. He's a resident of Chicago, former executive director of the Uptown Chamber of Commerce. Congress. He currently runs his own consulting firm near Raleigh. Chahua, ooh, y'all, y'all got to forgive me on these pronunciations. I don't know. Uh, Chicago, also from Chicago, is in the Raleigh. She uh, actually found time to bake while being a med school. She's a pre med student, which uh, I had in, in, in my notes as well, uh, at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And she has several baked goods. Dis- oh, no, I, I'm trying not to read all the, the extras because the, the extras right. give, give too much away. Uh, Stacy Nakamoto, Dr. Stacy Nakamoto is a biochemist and faculty manager at the UCLA. She's also the co-host of the Baker's Notebook, a home baking podcast. We out here. Y'all, mm-hmm. y'all ever wonder what my podcast is, is a viable uh, uh, kind of vibe. Uh, Diana O'Brien. I didn't know her last name was O'Brien. I, oh, let me see. Let me, I'm, I'm going to jump over to my other page of notes It was here. crazy. Like, uh, yeah. Well, maybe that's her mayor's name. I do, I, no, no. I do have I do have Diana O'Brien now. I mean, but it's like her 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 claiming of uh, Italian. Italian here, I was here. like, okay, with a last name like O'Brien. I get it, Mary's, but still. Uh, it was Susan it was Simpson. Samson Simpson. I'm sticking to my story. Anyway, <laughs> the wife, mother, and grandmother is, is no novice in baking competitions. In mm. 2021, she was the winner of the sweet bread slash rolls category in the adult division of the virtual national festival of breads. Okay. I see you, Susan Simpson. Karis Stucker. I didn't know Karis's last name. I just said, Babe, no, no, I see you, Susan. Philadelphia Spanish teacher and weightlifter is what I have in my own notes uh, as that she, uh, Credits the uh, uh, Great British Bake Off with teaching her how to, her baking skills that she possesses to this day, and is an avid watcher of the show with her mom. In addition to operating her own cakery, she also runs private Spanish lessons, which I just said. Jonathan Godfrey, or John, as they as they call him on the show, is a tech entrepreneur and self professed hacker. Oh, what mm. a title! And I had nothing on notes about him besides his name, and so thank you for that. He is the co-founder of the official student hackathon league that helps cultivate communities and, t- and teach computer skill, excuse me, computer science skills to more than half a million developers across the globe. Dope. Uh, Sarah Chang rounding out the Chicagoans is Sarah Chang. She also is a pursuit of a profession in the medical field. Oh, I didn't know. That. Again, all I have for her, her name in Chicago. So good shit <laughs> uh, in the medical field as a nursing student at the university of Illinois, Chicago, these people who are people who kind of like ships of the night, they kind of have to run into each other and then not because they're in two very different programs. So that's kind of cool. And uh, Sean Lou, Sean Lou is a digital illustrator, which seemingly gives him an advantage when it comes to, I'm not going to do that. Dang it. Uh, is, so, is this, is this the homie from San Francisco? Yeah. Who, who yeah. is, a, who is, a, who was like, who said he's a, a trained engineer, but definitely does not do engineering as his, as his, as his bread and butter. When I now see that he's an illustrator as, as what he does. 
So his, his, his mama definitely made him go to school for something, and he did not stick with it. <laughs> we know what that is. Um, a delight to have uh, to have these every, everybody. I I really I'm, I, I vibe with. I, I didn't have anybody. Oh, you know what? I'm a liar. <laughs> uh, once again, I, I've taken this uh, this stance of not enjoying this uh, uh, Italian woman. But oh, it's, it's, it's not it's not on some uh, some nonsense. It is it's it, or oh, it is on nonsense. It is because hold on, I went down. This is in my notes. Actually, did, I didn't put it in my little my little pros and cons list. It's because. Casting always seems to go find one of these damn fifties. Well, I love I love the fifties rockabilly type chicks, <laughs> and I'm like the fifties was garbage in this country. And no matter what y'all want to say about it, it was a terrible time for most people in this country. But they always want to go pretend they they want to go pull the best of the fifties and they mind out. And you feel like she's saying? low key racist. I know. I don't think low key at all. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Who is this with the fucking two piece green flower suit on? Which one is that? Oh my goodness! No, I don't know. She had one like um, that uh, was um that was, I believe that was Sarah. Okay, but my little yeah, when, when I heard about uh, Diana, which is you know low key Bonnick's first name, um. I I knew like I, like I because I watched this show three like three times today like I was just like I just run, ran it back to back I was well li- uh, pretty much listening and watching while I was working this morning and I was just like when I you know uh, put this list together I'm like yeah um, it makes sense that she's a bulldog lover <laughs> but, uh, totally made sense totally made sense in my head. <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, I it's a vibe I caught off of, and I was like, I was just like, Mm-mm, what's going on? Y'all, 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 y'all people in casting got to do better about. They always snag one of them too. It's always like that. Like, get me, she's unique, and this thing has a, a fresh look, and it's nothing fresh about. <laughs> give me a rockabilly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like everybody does that shit, and I'm kind of tired of it. But that's that's the only person I'm um, amongst these bakers I had any kind of uh, any kind of uh, I don't know. Not great. I had beef about. with the crying ass lady, but like, oh, but that's because I'm petty. I, I was saving that for later. <laughs> Worry not. Yeah. That is a that is a discussion to be had because it, it was. Also, Karis is my bay of the season. Yes, and and, uh, our... uh, and Zach, I, I'm kind of in love with Zach Cherry. Oh, that's my guy. Yeah, I, 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 I in general, uh, since oddly enough, since he was in. Uh, was it that Sp- it was Spider Man? Well, yeah, he was in that first. He was in one of the Spider Man movies, and then he, they put they, they they pulled his character back and put him in a uh, Shang Chi, and then he showed up on Doughboys, uh, the podcast I fuck with, and and he was such a delightful little guest to have on Doughboys. I was like, I was over. What's up, young Emory? and he and he was on um which yeah uh they're like he was on what do you call it uh Severance. Yes. Yeah, I, I I know he's on Severance. I have yet to watch Severance. Everybody Bruh. says I should watch Severance. Bruh. Please watch Severance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says that he just restarted watching. Uh, uh, started watching Ted Lasso from the beginning all over again. Again, yeah, no, again. trust me, I just started and just like that uh, again. <laughs> so yes, um, I th- so for me having the two American hosts with the two, you know, British uh, judges yeah. is not odd to me at all. It's just for the voiceover sometimes. I'm like, it is weird not having like a really great, Accent. you know, dulcet British yes. voiceover. But I don't, I don't, you know, it, I think having it in the meadow, in the tent, it, it, it's not exactly the same, but it's yeah. close enough. It'll do. All right, I'm going to give y'all just my general pros and cons list, and y'all tell me what y'all agree or disagree with. <laughs> okay. Here are my pros. Absolutely pin sharp on my TV. Like, that shit is 4K as fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, this shit is a crisp-ass image. I was thoroughly impressed by that. Uh, I, I wrote here, it's Bake Off through and through. Uh, I, and I also wrote that I love to explain methods and stuff, which is normally what I do in my notes. You know what I'm saying? I go through it, I like, it's shit that, that they seem to take for granted, I guess, that bakers know in England that we wouldn't know here. Now, I'm glad they, in many a situation this week on this first episode, they seem, they seem to go through and give you a decent explanation. And the times they didn't, guess what? I'm here. I'm going to explain it to you. Mm-hmm. My cons, commercials are absolute dreck. Hmm. I hate it. I hate them, hate them, I hate them. And watch, and I, as it turns out, watching it on a, on a computer 
with an ad blocker going seems to prevent that from happening. I didn't get a single commercial when I when I as I watched the data uh, do my notes. Uh, the tent seems super loud on that first episode, and I don't know. If, I don't recall hearing everything like that, just in the background, loud. And mm. it, it might be my, you know, it might be my surround sound or whatever like that. But I also I made a point to go back and uh, look at the, the the biscuits episode of this last season, the Bake Off, the double check, and it did not have all that loudness in the background of the tent. It just seemed like production was loud in the background, mm. and motherfuckers need to be quiet. Don't know if y'all heard it. I did. Uh, the color. And them on screen graphics that weird purple and sea foam Miami Vice colors they got when they pop up uh names and stuff. I was like, that really bothers me. I don't like that color combination. I don't like the font they use. I don't like that they do it in general because they don't seem to do that, do it like that on the English version. I didn't even notice. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so to you, it's not a problem. To me, I was like, mm -mm, no, thank you. Uh, Paul saying cookie is also on my cons list. I don't like that word out of his mouth. I'm you wanted it to be biscuit week. It's, it's, it's biscuits, bruh. And, I, and I, I hate to be that way, but biscuits work so much better for cookies. But the American audience would have expected Pillsbury dough. I feel like they are denying America's because we've all been watching Bake Off this whole time. Yeah. Right. But I think that they have to assume that they haven't been. I think that they're doing it strictly as like, this is an American show. And then all of us who've been watching on Netflix will come and find it because we will. Fair. But I think Fair. they probably put it out here. Like this is an American show. Yeah. My last complaint or con, forgive me, not really complaint. Ellie's a bit dull, but Zach is pretty fun. Yeah. I don't <laughs> love her. No. Uh, and I don't know. She'll, she'll, I, you know what? If you, if you go back and watch the holiday one, they did. She's a little more bubbly in that one. So I don't know, man. We, you, who knows? We, we'll get her right. Maybe yeah, she was nervous. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, as the the this season goes on, she'll be the less boring one. Um, yeah, she'll find her footing. And yeah, maybe um their their chemistry was just off because um yeah she she is the least fun one of the two so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's weird to have her playing the straight man. Because I I know she can be I know she's a she's a comedic actress so I guess maybe mm -hmm. maybe as maybe she just needs some better writing or something I can't call it it's an assumption on my part to, to think that she's actually funny because maybe she's just not <laughs> um oh uh, anything y'all anything that y'all notice that sticks out like to y'all like ooh what is going on there you know um one one thing um that I've noticed that I kind of uh, agree with Nick a little bit. But I, I do kind of feel like the audience is already here because of they watched the Great British Bake Off. Maybe. Because, okay, okay. I, well, I'm saying, I, for, for me, I, I believe it's that because most of the people in the tent, that's what they watched. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, they said, they said as much. Like, um, Jonathan mentioned it for sure. He... Uh, when he was talking about um, how he thought that uh, Paul Hollywood would describe his um, his biscuits. Yeah, um, I'm just saying that like the the British show knows that Americans are watching and they don't Americanize it for us. So yeah. I can see why they don't Britishize it for for them. I, I got to get it for getting Britishized out so easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if, in, in a couple of times it was... Um, I don't know. Maybe because I, I did, did, uh, dated uh, foreign people before, but I, I, I strongly dislike when I'm like, "Well, you, oh, well, that's something that's Americanized." I'm like, "Come on, man, you've been you've been here forever. What are you saying that for?" <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it it was just like like I said, I would really like to. I almost cheated and watched, um, kept on watching today, but I didn't. Um, I've seen like three episodes, but it's very forget forgettable. They will be new <laughs> to me again. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. I, I it's that's not all... the show's fault. Yeah, it, I, I think it's right now. Currently, how you are watching it is uh, kind yeah. of not uh, not giving you the best experience. So it sucks, and and because I can only watch it on my phone, I kind of watch it while I'm working. So it's yeah. not like I get that enjoyment of like being on the couch under a blanket with some tea, watching my baking show. You know what? I will. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I know you said you. Um, I, I'll, I'll see if I can. We can get you the other Roku stick here because I, I do have another one. If you're willing. 
I mean, I'm, I'm always going. I'm always going to try to make your experience as best yeah. as it can be, my dear. Yeah, like if I could watch it on TV, that's that's great. Because watching shit on my phone is just bleh. for the bees. If I, that's 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 a young man's game, and none of us is there no more. We can't be watching whole movies on our phone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to it, y'all. Uh, yeah. Our signature challenge this week is cookie bars. 12 identical layered bars with a cookie base must be in- must include a decorative element and two, at least two visible layers. Uh, first up is Martin, who went with a strawberry and rhubarb crumble bar. So there's a shortbread cookie base with sliced strawberries and these pretty <laughs> little shortbread stars to decorate it. I think they turned out pretty decent. Mm-hmm. He said the crumble was the first thing he ever baked. Yeah, I like that idea. I would have never, I would have never started my my baking bit with rhubarb, but to each their mm-hmm. own. Uh, Susan is making strawberry lemon bars, uh, brown butter with a lemon zest shortbread base, strawberry and lemon curd filling. Uh, Stacy went with mocha pecan bars, shortbread base pecan caramel, and mocha ganache layers topped with little caramel hearts. Or caramel. You say it how you will, people. I'm going to say caramel. <laughs> uh, Sean with, with Campfire Confections. Uh, this is a pecan cookie base topped with spiced brownie, chocolate ganache, pipe meringue, and a twill, 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 twill. Look, T-U-I-L-L-E. How that's supposed to be twill is beyond me, but it is the word for a bit of decoration. <laughs> Harris, and in parentheses I have right here, of course, my show boo, but also I feel like she won't make it past week three. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to why here shortly. <laughs> Elevated Canadian butter tart cookies. So these was a short base, uh, a, short, a shortbread base with a walnut, raisin, butter, and maple syrup filling. Decorated candied walnuts and gold leaf. Edible gold leaf, she said to, to Paul, to Paul Hollywood, who responded, is all gold leaf edible? <laughs> and, uh, she said, I don't know, Paul. <laughs> uh, I don't know either. I, I don't know if there's a difference between the edible and the and the uh, non-edible. So we will, uh, we don't want to make assumptions, Paul. What if I fed, I fed you the wrong thing? Uh, Diana. For what y'all know spells her name, D-Y-A-N-A. So it's spelled a little funky as well. It matters. <laughs> Oh, oh, here's here's where I wrote it out. I swear it's always one of these. I want to live in the 50s types on the show like this. Casting has to stop. So <laughs> I knew I wrote it out somewhere. <laughs> uh, she went with uh, Sicilian blood orange and pistachio bars with a ricotta filling, ricotta filling on a pistachio cookie base, topped with an orange mascarpone cream and a white chocolate petal. Uh, Sarah went with sesame ginger caramel bars, ginger tomatoes, ginger shortbread base, topped with tahini caramel. Decorated with sesame seeds and candy ginger. Who kept using tahini in that last uh, season of bacon? Oh my god! <laughs> and every time I hear tahini, I think of something else, like yeah. hummus. And so when I hear about it in a baking in a dish, I'm like, why are they putting hummus in the cookies? <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, John with pig roast pistachio bars, and they le- they gave him a look that was like. Is he trying to say you put some swine up in this? But he was like, no, I made it a pig roast once. And there were people who enjoyed them shits. Settle down, Paul. <laughs> uh, it's a shortbread base top with pistachio cream filling, dark chocolate ganache, and pistachios. Uh, <laughs> as always in that damn tent, people forget it get hot. And to decorate means shit got to be cooled off. And those who got that right did better than those who did not. It was just a, it was a fun go round. Some people over here decorating hot ass cookies, and guess what? It did not do as well as it could have, and it looked kind of weird because stuff started melting off of it. And then, aren't they also contending with like Celsius? I <laughs> would hope that they flipped them o- um, ovens over to Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> but if they did not, then yes. But also, that's kind of that, that I find that interesting as well. Like, you got to learn some new something new for real, for real. Well. That was um one uh, and and I think that might have been the case because Sean um commented on it was hotter how the than we thought. Baked hotter. Mm-hmm. Um, yet again, you we mentioned how Di- Diana had trouble with that. Um, yeah, I I think uh, for me, um, Susan, when I seen her pulling out those dry strawberries, I knew she was gonna have a strong bake. The freezer eye joints, we all yeah. we were saying, because we we know from years of watching Bake Off, 
That's always the trick. That's how you get. That's how you get the punch of flavor of strawberry without getting the wet. Yeah, without getting the salty bake. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as the judging went as follows: uh, for Martin, they said they liked the look. It was tangy and lovely. Susan, very lemon curd for quite delicious and summery. For Diana, clearly a symbol when it was warm, too thick, but the flavors were good. Stacy, the base is as caramelized. As in, like the way it, the the butter and the cookie cooked, it made basically a caramel base, to, and then that was, I guess, an unpleasant situation. But the flavors were spot on and delicious. Uh, for Narali, so big, shortbread, <laughs> cr- crumbly, dry. <laughs> That's what blondie she said. Was, the the blondie was dry. The flavor was good. Uh, Sean, chili overwhelmed. So he was trying to get a just a little spice note, and it just ended up overwhelming the rest of the flavor. Yeah, with the hotness, it um, it might have actually bloomed it instead of just um, adding a little spice. Which is um, taught me. Uh, I made uh, a mac and cheese for uh, Vanessa's niece's uh, graduation, and I hit the paprika in the uh, in the bechamel, and it made for a wildly spicy. But everybody seemed to mm-hmm. like it anyway. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Mac and cheese because it bloomed as opposed to just you know a little add to it. And so now I add that way later in the process and it still works. It works. You still get that little heat, but you don't get it like, like you got it with that one. Uh, Sarah's biscuit. See, I even wrote biscuit because fuck writing cookie. Y'all. Uh, <laughs> biscuit is overbaked, crumbly and dry, not refined enough. Lovely flavor. For Karis, not too dry, delicious. The fruit makes a big difference. Our first Hollywood handshake of Ooh. the series. Yes. I screamed. I like screamed. I was like, I- Rump. <laughs> hey, I was, I was, I'm very, I was very, very excited for that. I, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I, you know, I, you know, it is. I'm rooting for everybody black, but in particular, she just brought, she brings something that I'm like, yeah, this is never on Bake Off. We don't get this, and I like mm-hmm. having this here. And well, so, I, I, I dig, I dig her. Every, I dig her whole vibe, and I like how, how she was cooking, at least in this first round. Well, just like with Maxie, I feel like um, Paul just got a thing for black women. I mean, why wouldn't he? Why would you not? Yeah, why wouldn't he? (laughs) Especially when they got dressed. He just, he just, he just, you know. You speak to him. Yeah. He started leaning in in that, uh, leaning (laughs) in a little closer. Oh, you know she smelled good. You know she smelled good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Cocoa butter. (laughs) Shea butter. Oh, my goodness. So moisturized. So that was our technical, I mean, excuse me, our signature uh, for our technical challenge. Uh, our judges requested. So you have, in case you didn't know what I'm saying, in case it's the first time you ever listened to this show and don't know about Bake Off. Uh, technical challenge is basically, uh, they uh, hit you with a recipe, a minimal ass recipe, and say, do that. And <laughs> uh, and and Paul, to, uh, to as always, uh, who set this particular challenge, did exactly that. He requested 12 pistachio and raspberry macarons filled with this, this particular. I want y'all to understand this matters. A shiny pistachio flavored creme au bain, which is just French buttercream, a.k.a. creme pat with butter added. Can mm. Charles wonder what that meant? Mm. And raspberry confit. 90 minutes to prepare it, which is a real brief time, real short time to make uh to make macarons for real, for real. Uh they want <clears throat> what what seemed to stumble everybody uh, many a baker up was this the, they wanted the he wanted the Italian meringue method, which was throwing everybody off. And they, they explained the show the Italian meringue method method is to pour hot syrup uh into the uh the egg whites as you beat them. And uh, it, it just makes for a different uh, experience with your with your macarons and uh, the combination of them not knowing how to do the Italian method and no, a rare few noticing that they had been given a template to draw with. Yeah, right. like what, what do you think that it's like? If it's there, is there for a reason? And they just missed it. I was surprised nobody <laughs> tried to punch it like after they baked it while doing that. Yeah. That, I mean, I don't know if that would have been good, but at least that would have made like it's there for a reason. Yeah, know? like you say, and I feel like that's a lesson learned. And then going forward, they will uh, they will have that locked down. The, the comfy method of a uh, of a uh, basically jam making means none of these people should have had seeds in their jam, and almost all of them did. <laughs> so because yeah. they didn't run it through a sieve, which is what you what you're supposed to do. Uh, the judging on this one goes as follows: and the Raleigh was up first. Needed a bit more green, nice flavor, nice and chewy. 
Uh, for Mer for Martin, it was nicely decorated, good color, nice and chewy, light and crisp. For Sarah, they were dinky. Paul's words. Good looking, flavors good, a nice dome, and bold decoration. John's were described as lurid green, which, trust me, is not a good thing. Uh, it was, the, the jam was good, but it had the seeds in it. Clearly not baked long enough. Uh, that was a mess, y'all. Mm. <laughs> these, these were the worst batch on this table of, of, of some worse, of some bad ones. They were absolutely terrible. He, uh, I don't, I, I, he did not grasp the Italian meringue method and, uh, suffered for it. And so they were severely, severely underbaked and they looked like absolute dreck. Just did you gross. notice how dirty he was? Yeah, his, and, and Paul pointed out to me that is all. Look, I want uh, of years of watching this show. It it proves every time a disorganized baker don't last very long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they be dirty, they be struggling. Yeah, yeah, because they be losing things, and then they wonder where shit is at, and they get confused. It's like clean as you go, and you'll just be, be all the better for it. Time for stories, are you? Uh, Diana, her decoration was a little all over the place. Some of them had more pistachio, some of them had more raspberry power, powder. So forth and so on. Uh, pale, a little bit of a dome. Needed just a little bit longer in the oven. Just, just, just one hit away. Uh, Stacy's color not bad. Nice and shiny. Good on the good on the mouth is a is a Paul Hollywood type <laughs> ass description. Uh, crispy, <laughs> chewy, but all the seeds was there. And I'm saying again, they didn't sieve their uh, their 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 raspberries. Uh, a little small, but tasty. Carrots, small, Ooh. flat. And too soft. If mm. if John's were the worst, Karis, who I mind mind you, just got a handshake earlier in the day, was the second worst. It was real bad. <laughs> and again, she didn't use the template. She didn't fully grasp the Italian meringue method, and they're just under slightly under bay. It was bad news for those particular meringues. I mean, forgive me, uh, uh, macarons. Which of course you was like, I'm making macarons in the in the showstopper. I gotta prove myself, and I need people to stop trying to prove themselves. Stop doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, I get what you want to do, but you, that's not how this functions. You ain't gotta prove nothing to nobody. You are in this tent already for a reason. Don't worry about it. Let that go, and they never can. Uh, Sean Dinky again, nice flavor, shiny and dome. Susan, nice decoration, wrong color. All the color was in the it was in the creme all bear. And uh, basically, that's all you could taste. They they were not. And she was so excited to make macarons because she knew what she, she knew what to do. But then it was, again, the Italian meringue me uh, method just caught her. And then so she went from excited to like, yeah, I fuck with these two. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, ranking is as follows. Ninth is John. Eighth is Karis. Seven is Susan. Six is Sarah. Five, Diana. Four is Dean. Three is Stacy. Two is Martin. And number one was Norali. So that was our technical challenge and uh, good technical. That's a real good technical. I, I, I like how uh, how Paul pulled that out the hat, and uh, I think that that's a it's a good lesson to be learned there going forward for the, the these bakers that they would be like, okay, clearly I need to read the fuck out of read these instructions, everything. Yeah. but also it's all here for a reason underneath this underneath this uh this this blanket. I need to make sure I use everything that is in here as well. Nobody's trying to surprise or shock you or whatever. It's there for a reason. Yeah, and, that, uh, yeah, that was a hundred percent there for. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that was that was that was, that was an own goal, and, and they could have done better. And who knows, maybe they will. For our showstopper this week, the judges would like a three D cookie centerpiece depicting a scene from home. Bakers have four hours to complete this, and uh, here's what they did. Uh, John wanted to make the Hell's Gate Bridge, which is a minor New York bridge. He described. And uh, says him and his wife were married underneath that bridge. Uh, his br uh, bridge is going to be built with a honey gingerbread foundation, shoe pastry on the details, and a meringue water underneath the bridge. Kind of, I like the way everything about that worked out, to, in my opinion. It looked real good. It's what kept him in the tent, in, in, in my opinion. Well, we'll get there. Uh, Martin went with Hollywood Beach, which I guess is the beach around uh, of, of, of Lake Michigan in Chicago, where, where he's from. Uh, he went with a honey graham cracker and lemon verbena cookie, uh, buttercream decorated beach goers, and a sugar cookie sand to make the whole beach vibe out. I, I liked his a lot as well. That, that, that turned out really well in my in my opinion. Uh, Narali made the physical therapy center that took care of her uh, 
after she was uh, struck by an SUV uh, some years back and help, uh, you know, get her back uh, going. And what I did, what I noticed here is uh, they spelled center. You know, they put the little image up of her, 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 uh, what is what her, her bait should look like. They spell center like the Brits spell it. C N T R E. And I was like, it's not like that you do that. That's that, that was my biscuit for this episode. <laughs> my biscuit. Yeah, regime. yeah, yeah, there you go. My courgette was that right there. <laughs> um, uh, she made this, uh, this is uh, her, uh, her structure was made with a, uh, uh, lemon, honey, gingerbread, almond shortbread decorated with lemon and mango icing and marzipan for the details, for the fine details. Uh, Karis went with the Liberty Bell. Anyway, <laughs> it's a gingerbread base with spice ganache decorated with royal icing flowers, lemon macarons filled with raspberry and white chocolate. We'll get to that. Uh, Sean made the fairy building. Uh I assume you've been past the ferry building once or twice in your in your in your time, Nick. Did it did it did he did he work the ferry building? Did he like hey that's the oh, it was great. Building. It was Very really good. great. It was really great. Yeah. Uh lavender and earl gray infused uh of cookies is what he ended up using, decorated with honey lemon glaze, boiled sugar for the windows on a uh I I I mind you, I went and got the pronunciation of this earlier, so I can do this. Hmm. Fiatine or paille fiatine. Which is a crispy convection made of tiny sweetened crepes. Your boy be on it. Cause they didn't tell you what a fiatine was, but I went and found out for you. Uh, that is a French ass word and it's a difficult pronunciation. F E U I L L E T I N E. There you go. <laughs> Stacy, her crime came literally out of nowhere, but I'm going to blame that on the edit. Cause it's like, <laughs> Soon as she opened her mouth, she was like, I'm so emotional. And I'm like, are you? <laughs> or are you putting on a show? But I'm going to give you the credit and I'm going to blame it on the edit. Something, And I'm going to say something might have happened between here and there. I don't think that she was putting on a show because even when they came around to talk to her um, for the signature, she just seems like, oh, this is going to come out way worse than I mean it to. She just seems like one of those people that she's just kind of like, kind of insufferable. Like she just was very, very, very excited to be there, and the way she expressed it was super awkward, and it felt put on. But I think she's just probably like an awkward person. I, we, the three of us, are Bake Off podcasters. If they motherfucking let me in that tent, I would right. probably be on that shit too. So I would be I get, I get really, what you mean. yeah, I would be really inappropriate with Paul Hollywood if I was in the tent. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, anyway, uh, she was going for the Maui Bell Tower. It was representative of her people who came over from Japan. Uh, and they told a, her ass that she was using the wrong fucking cookie. <laughs> they told her. <laughs> uh, people, you do not build with shortbread. You can decorate with shortbread. Your know, base can whatever. It should not be built off that. And she used a macadamia shortbread, which I'm sure is delicious and short and crispy and tasty, but not crispy. there's nothing to make structure with. Well, yeah, actually, probably not. <laughs> should have been crispy. Could have been crispy, but Pillow-y. was not. Pillowy. Pillowy is actually uh, a <laughs> uh, lime infused gingerbread roof macaron lanterns with a marshmallow fondant bell. That that, that bell quite literally brought the house down. So. <laughs> It was uh, it was no good there. Uh, Sarah made the L train because uh, she's from Chicago, and people in Chicago be really banging for the L. I, and every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, there it is. That's the L. I don't, I never have any idea of trying to get on that bitch though. So, uh, orange zest, cinnamon, and cardamom flavored gingerbread, all decorated royal icing. They skipped right over her in this edit. It was like, yep, that's her making this, and they let it, and they kept kept it moving. I was like, okay. So she get no 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 shine this week, but also no dissing. So that basically, I was like, she probably just did fine, and it turns out she did fine. Diana made the Belmont Park Big Dipper roller coaster. I don't know. Have you ever kicked down in San Diego? That's some that's some shit you hit to. Um, not at this park, no. All right, very good, very good. Uh, it was cool. Uh, we had a Big Dipper here years ago at a at a. At a uh, Wait, uh, is it on like a boardwalk? I, I, I think I probably have been there. I think, oh, well, but we have go. a big dipper at Santa Cruz. It's a like one of the oldest wooden roller coasters in yeah, California was, or at whatever. A, at, a, at a theme park we had here called Yaga Lake, Belmont Park, San Diego. I'm gonna throw it in the old uh, Google right quick, and I will tell you uh, 
Because I feel like if that if that is what I think it is, then I have walked by there. Yeah, it's it's, it's on the Mission Beach Boardwalk. Yeah, so I you, you definitely walked by it. it. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, that is what she was making, representative of uh, her love of home. Uh, gingerbread decorated with royal icing, coconut and sugar sand, uh, surrounded by macaron carousels and umbrellas. I like the, the decoration. I like everything. I like everything about this. It, uh, I, it everything about it seems smart. Uh, I, and, 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 and like a good deal. So I was like, okay, there we go. Uh, Susan made a, the Delaware lighthouse. She made a molasses gingerbread, uh, a cookie for the base of the structure and some chocolate wafers. And they had these smashed cookie rocks on this uh, blue caramel. See, the idea was sound. Uh, I looked pretty good. And, and so, uh, I was like, okay, I, I see, what, I see what you got going there. And if she can decorate like that, kind of like oh, just at a whim like that. She she can go far as long as everything tastes good and bakes up right. Susan is our um like our n- grandma auntie of the season, and th- mm-hmm. those are usually very endearing ladies. Um, and hopefully this time one of them goes really far. I would like to see her go really far. Yeah, yeah, she seems gen- generally sweet. Delaware is a, a reasonably uh decent <laughs> area of the country, uh politically speaking. So uh, <laughs> I'm Delaware. For her. So Delaware is not far from here, which I only learned by living here. You like pass through it going to um, New York or whatever. But before that, my only reference for Delaware, and since we're all around the same age, y'all probably have it too, is Wayne's World. Um, (laughs) When he's doing the like green screen and he's like Hawaii, whatever. And then he gets to Delaware and he's like, hi, I'm in (laughs) Delaware. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh! I I get I I, I just the general the general the DMV that's the D in the DMV so that general area no, of the country is, uh, it is not is it not Delaware oh it's DC no. the DMV yeah I don't think it's Delaware Maryland Virginia absolutely not Mm-mm. DC Maryland Virginia how weird because Delaware is right there for corn's sake that's a real yeah. to Delaware I'm just you to know. <laughs> Well, it's because it's a local thing and it takes like five hours to get to Delaware, four hours to get to Delaware because Maryland is a huge state to drive through. Yeah, um, but it's yeah. it's the district and then it's Maryland and Virginia. All right. Well, well herp them in the home of the turpins, y'all. That's what it goes down like at uh, our judging. Sarah was up first, slightly burned. Otherwise, it tasted beautiful. Just the the edges were burned. The in, the inner. Wait, like, we forgot. Um, my man's got a handshake on his showstopper. Yes. Well, you got here yet? Oh, you. Oh, I thought that's. Oh, I thought that's what you were doing right now. Oh, you're talking. Okay, I see what happened. <laughs> no, just because you were talking about the way that stuff turned out, I thought we yeah. were. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, 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 we walk it. We walk it. I got, I got you. you. Uh, Diana was up next. Uh, fantastic construction. Interesting flavor. Wrong texture. Hmm. Which I'm just like, what you mean by that, bro? It's like, I don't know. Uh, I, that that's one of like, I'm like, come on, bro. It's gingerbread. You know what it's gonna be. Uh, Susan looks stunning, very chewy, but was the top was far too soft. She made basically a molasses cookie, which actually held up structurally, but again, not you know, I guess what was expected. They wanted a, a biscuit with a little bit of snap, and that's just not what they were getting. Uh, Narali original, good solid construction, so delicate, beautiful texture. I thought that Mar- shit looked a mess. That <laughs> flag was melting. It was like whatever she was using, that sugar as like the adhesive was dripping off of it. It was leaning. Like that shit looked a mess. <laughs> and how many how many times have we said if you're gonna decorate or paint on there, do it flat, not while it's up and through the going wrong. It's just like the basic rules of baking. But, uh, I know what it is. I can say that shit from the sidelines because right. I'm not I'm not I'm not in the in the action. But it's like, I would hope their brain would be like, decorate this bitch first and then put it together. But yeah, they never really liked way. how hers tasted, though. So I think that saved her. Yeah. But I always feel like it's kind of cheating when they use um, Rice Krispie treats. And that's what... I mean, you have to do something to shore that bitch up, man. So, I mean... <laughs> and you had to... She had to make that, so... Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, I guess she didn't pump the rice right quick, but I mean, damn, man. <laughs> let her, let her get a walk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um... Martin, Martin. That's superb decorating, beautiful cookies, so cute, beautifully baked. Yeah, that beach, that little beach tower turned out really well. I really liked it. Sean, precise, exquisite icing, wonderful flavor. Your second Hollywood handshake. Paul, Paul, 
a handshake in the in the in the showstopper, y'all. It's, it's not rare. unheard of, but it's of the rarest of the rare treats because basically you got to come over and get dapped up by my man. And it's probably got to be slick with it. Like, I need you to come over here and look at look at something. Yeah, and it, and, 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 and it always sounds like your daddy about to curse you out. So it's like, <laughs> okay, what I do wrong? <laughs> and nah, nah, like you ain't do nothing wrong, son. You did this excellent. That shit looks so cool. I don't know the fairy building. I don't. It's, I, I, it I looks know, just yeah. like that. It looks yeah. just like that. So I, 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 that was really well done. Uh, I like Sean. I like Sean as a baker in, in, in general, but he also had he just had vibes. So I don't know. I just fuck with Yair people. I think is what it comes down to, and so he got them vibes. <laughs> so for right now, that's my that's my guy in the tent besides yeah. my boo Karis. So Same. there you go. <laughs> uh, for speaking of Karis. <laughs> Ooh. Girl, I, thought was, I thought she was going home off this shit. I want y'all. Yeah, to know they that. were. They put her name in the conversation to go home. Yeah, yeah. could break your teeth on it. Oh no! Like concrete. These are not descriptive descriptions you want on your bait. It looked like absolute shit, y'all. She's trying to make Liberty Bell. I don't know how you fucked that up, but she did. They said she got the crack right. <laughs> the crack right. Oh, <laughs> um, Which, but the spice right. is there. And the flavors were delicious, and so that's that's what's saving grace. And it did it followed the brief. It was a three D structure that that stood, you know. So yeah. can't, I cannot be uh, too mad at her. Uh, for John, good construction, underbaked, great flavor. Like I said, he made that bridge, and uh, Paul, it was so you good. Yeah, you would. It was just so well done. It just, um, you know, it was underbaked. So can't do nothing about that. But you know, keep baking it. I guess. <laughs> Uh, last up was Stacy. Delicate, tastes good, great flavor. Should have dialed back the butter because it's the 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 butter and, and folded a different way. It is that reason that her whole const- her construction did not hold up at all. Literally collapsed just right then and there. And were we further into a season and they knew her better, she probably could have made it off of that. Like, oh, yo, it tastes good as shit, man. Everybody shit fall. But, but she didn't do anything well. Yeah, no. From end to end. Everything was just mid AF and uh this proved to be what sent her home. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll just jump to it. Eliminated this week was Stacy. So she We're got one week of <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm I was distrustful of that crying. I'm not I'm I, I know I shouldn't be, but I was just like it it rang false. It just it just did to me. And I don't know, man. Like I said y'all can watch it and y'all can be like uh Y'all can, y'all can, I mean, oh yeah, that shit really do look like a damn fairy building. Wowzers. <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. Right? If, if the only way it would have looked more like the fairy building is if he made it gray somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he, he did use Earl been. Gray. Yes, he did. Oh, play on words. You know, and lavender. Yeah. Yeah. I have some Earl Gray and lavender tea in my cabinet right now. That is Vanessa's go to beverage currently. Mm. Or so when she when she wake up in the morning, she's like, Can you make me a cup of tea? I'm like, I got you. <laughs> I have some um lady gray because I don't drink I don't do caffeine anymore. I didn't realize mm-hmm. that was the, the difference maker. Mm-hmm. So, as a lady when we, we, we doth our cat for her. your star baker this week is Martin. And uh yeah, I I I I'm not taken aback by that. That is a, I could have made a case for Sean, but I'm not mad yeah, about for Martin. Sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we 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 can we can definitely agree with that, and uh, I'm, I, I dig that. I like that. Uh, that that I like that. It, there there's you could argue one way or the other, and and who got, who won does not seem so so out of pocket, you know. And uh, Karis lives on to fight another week. <laughs> well, well, she she did mention that um, you know uh, cake week will be her strong week, so maybe uh, you know she will shoot off like a piston after this. We we shall see. We we shall see, sir. But uh, yeah, that was it. That was the first episode of, of of series six, episode one of the Great American Baking Show. I don't like that name. <laughs> the G A B S. Yeah, Gabs. Ugh. Just, <laughs> I don't like that. Just like I don't like I don't like cookie when a biscuit works so well. Good lord, do I? I don't. I guess in life, I don't say I don't really say biscuit or cookie unless I'm talking about some biscuits. So I can't call it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say biscuit only because it to me biscuit is a biscuit. You know, we're talking you know butter, gravy, mm-hmm. fur, <laughs> raisins, and, and, and a chi- whatever a piece of fried chicken, road ankles, <laughs> these things. Mac- <laughs> oh, hold on, 
I'm not going to say I don't fuck with Bojangles because the only Bojangles I have any recollection of is the Bojangles that was inside of Union Station down there. I don't, that one, Boj- I don't know if that's good Bo- uh, Bojangles. I'll say uh, Bojangles is kind of one of those things. I feel like a lot of fast food is regionally different. Um, the Bojangles in Union Station was fine to me. There used to be a Bojangles around the corner from my house when I lived in Durham. I don't really love their chicken, like on the bone. I mm. only do Supremes, Bow Rounds, and the biscuit because the <laughs> filet in the biscuit is incredible. But the regular chicken, I could take it or leave it. Fair, fair enough. Good to know. I feel I feel much better about it because people be making Boj- Bojangles out be like like the the second coming. I'm just like they um, attacked it. Keith Lee for that. For his Bojangles take, but like I, I felt him. It really Supremes and a biscuit it, yeah. and bow rounds or bow. I don't like the bowberry biscuits because I don't like fruity biscuits. But yeah, you know, man, I would say it's them good. Bowberries. Like every, every time I see somebody on the internet, it's, it's like Yo, these bowberries is doing something. So I don't yeah, know I'm not a fruity biscuit is. person. Bro. I haven't tried it at uh, Popeyes either, bro. That's because Popeyes be wild at like. You you think I can at least try to use the app, but no, it'll be like no, you can't use the app at this location. <laughs> I said, Fuck you then! It serves no right. purpose. <laughs> right. It has nothing to do with anything, people. Uh, that was our episode. Uh, uh, what's our poll? Y'all got a poll idea for this? For okay, uh, you know what? Biscuits or cookies? Which one are you going mm-hmm. up for? Mm-hmm. As easy as that. I'm gonna type it up right now so I can remember to add it to the notes. <laughs> Uh, you know what it is. This episode go, will go, will go up on Tuesday. These episodes go up on Tuesday. We record on Tuesday. It's, just, it's 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 an easy process, and I believe there are six episodes of this particular show, which means they're gonna be eating people up quick on this one. And so, uh, I can't call it. They are in the midst of. Are they about to start filming? I believe they're about to start filming of regular Bake Off in 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 in, in the old in merry old England because uh, they recently had done the. Uh, you know, the Baker drive, whatever the hell you want to call it, <laughs> getting the Baker. So it's about that time for them to start rec- uh, filming that. And so that'll be here in the, uh, in the late summer going into the fall when uh, we return for that one, but we will be back next week to do this. So again, I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm very excited for this. We, we've been trying to get this uh, going for a little bit here. Uh, everybody has had some a schedule, but don't worry. I told you we had you and uh, we, we did. And so I, I think you will enjoy it. That is Nick Jew. Bye. That's Ant, <laughs> along with both his boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is I. I am uh, Taylor713. Uh, hit us up, podcast at stagecrunchyamilk.com or 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. We would certainly love to hear from you. Feel free to text and or leave a, a voicemail on that message. You're good either way, and we would love to hear from you. We will catch you next week. I don't know. Let me wrap this up. What kind of bake uh, ideology ideology do we need? <laughs> hmm. What's your favorite kind of cookie, Emery? Uh, chocolate chip. All right. Here it is. Chocolate chip. We'll catch you next week. Peace. What happened to your ass? It used to be beautiful.